Frederick Chaluba, nicknamed Dwarf by political opponents for his small stature, was the first democratically elected president of Zambia, as well as the first to be convicted of corruption during his tenure. Chaluba's origin and place of birth were the subject of legal proceedings during his re-election in 1996, wanting to keep him out of the elections, opponents tried to prove that he was born on the territory of the Belgian Congo. Little is also known about his parents, in general, it is obvious that this man has achieved everything himself. An important circumstance, another obstacle, was the small stature, only 150 centimeters, which is important in African society. But he obviously had the will and the desire to get his way. Having no formal education, he studied himself as best he could. He worked as a conductor, accountant, store manager, worked with staff in a Tanzanian agricultural firm. In parallel, he completed courses for librarians, studying remotely by mail. Already as president, Chaluba received a diploma from the British University of Warwick. In his numerous works, Chaluba found opportunities to prove himself, he became an activist of the trade union movement. He quickly gained influence among his colleagues and in 1974 became chairman of the Zambian Congress of Trade Unions, an association of the 19 largest trade union organizations in the country. This congress was originally created by the authorities as an instrument of interaction with labor collectives and was, in fact, part of the political system. Chaluba initially fit into this format, but over time began to pursue a more independent policy. The Zambian Congress of Trade Unions fell out of the power vertical in 1981, when Chaluba, along with other trade union leaders, entered into an open confrontation with the government. Against the backdrop of the deteriorating economic situation, trade unions initiated strikes, the 1986 unrest in the largest cities of the country was also organized by them. President Konda obviously appreciated Chaluba's leadership potential and tried to win him over to his side. He offered him the post of Minister of Labor, but Chaluba refused, this subsequently contributed to the crystallization of his image as a consistent oppositionist. Meanwhile, the Congress of Trade Unions has become the largest opposition structure in the country. The lifting of the ban on the activities of opposition parties in 1990 allowed the formation of a movement for multi-party democracy, called MMD. MMD merged with some other political forces, and in 1991 held the first national congress and elected Chaluba as chairman. The new political force received money from Zambian businessmen and, most importantly, the open support of the United States and the promise of economic assistance to Zambia in the event of an election victory. The 1991 multi-party elections showed broad support for MMD. Chaluba's party won an overwhelming majority of seats in parliament, and Chaluba himself won the presidential election with a result of 75%. The peaceful transfer of presidential powers was, at that time, only the second case on the African continent when democratic elections were able to ensure a change of power. As in a number of other African countries, Chaluba's economic policy was predetermined by the creditors' views on what it should be. Therefore, the new president's rule began with unpopular market reforms and privatization. Prices were liberalized, including for maize, a vital product for Zambians, and a market exchange rate was established. Many state and semi-state enterprises were privatized, although the government carried out the privatization of the most important and largest copper holding ZCCM only in 2000. As you know, copper exports provide about 80% of export revenues, and the Chaluba government did not want to lose such a resource. Subsequently, the government even regained control over some parts of the company. Chaluba defended this policy, referring to the negative experience when foreign companies neglect the interests of the country and workers and think only about profit. In general, this position of the president was supported by trade unions and various political forces. 
However, according to expert estimates, the Chaluba government has not been able to achieve serious success in economic policy. The shock reforms caused a serious decline in the standard of living of the vast majority of Zambians. The abolition of protectionist measures of the previous government, for example, the rejection of agricultural subsidies, led to mass impoverishment of farmers who left their villages and flocked to cities, multiplying the number of lumpen there. The privatization of enterprises helped attract foreign investment, but the lack of proper control and regulation led to the fact that some large companies were simply destroyed by new foreign owners, who sold off the inherited property, and employees were fired. Low prices for copper, Zambia's main export commodity, were a serious obstacle to economic development. Social security of the population under Chaluba, in fact, was absent. Only employees of state and large non-state companies had the right to medical care and a pension. The Chaluba government has done nothing in this area. The internal political situation was stable only externally. The most striking political and personal conflict of that time was the personal hostility between Chaluba and his predecessor Konda, it was the tall Kenneth Konda who launched Chaluba's nickname, the Four-Foot Dwarf. In 1993, a conspiracy allegedly organized by Kenneth Konda's entourage was uncovered, after which Frederick Chaluba declared a state of emergency to protect democracy. Before the 1996 elections, amendments to the electoral legislation were adopted to prohibit the nomination of Kenneth Conda for president. The presidential elections themselves looked strange after that, Conda called for them to be boycotted. Foreign observers did not consider them honest and free. Chaluba declared a state of emergency again at the end of 1997, after a speech by a group of soldiers who declared their intention to overthrow Chaluba. They were quickly neutralized, but Frederick Conda was arrested and released only in March 1998, they say, after the intervention of such authorities as Nelson Mandela and Julius Nyerere. At the same time, the state of emergency was lifted without any explanation. At the end of Chaluba's reign, the idea of amending the constitution so that the president would have the right to run for another term was floating among the inner circle. Although Chaluba has always denied the existence of such intentions in himself, the evidence of contemporaries suggests the opposite. The topic of the successor remained taboo until the very last moment. In 2001, when the issue became urgent, Chaluba tried to enlist the support of regional elites by simply handing out bribes. Chaluba's maneuvers eventually caused a mutiny on the ship. Even among his inner circle, many opposed the third term, actively and openly expressing their position. Chaluba was left, in fact, alone and was forced to declare his commitment to the constitutional limitation of the presidential mandate to two terms. Apparently, after Chaluba's third term became unrealistic, it was decided to choose a Emmanuel successor through whom it would be possible to retain real power. Unexpectedly, Levi Mwanawasa was chosen as such a puppet. Of course, he was vice president under Chaluba, but until 1994, when he resigned, accusing the government of corruption. Why Chaluba chose Mwanawasa is unclear. It is known that his candidacy was advised to Chaluba by some politicians from the closest presidential entourage. He was considered an independent politician who would listen to the charismatic Chaluba. Without a doubt, Chaluba made the final choice himself and made efforts to ensure that Mwanawasa's candidacy was successfully voted on at the MMD conference. As time has shown, Chaluba worked to implement, perhaps, the worst possible scenario for himself. After the successful election of Mwanawasa, Chaluba soon became a defendant in a criminal case about the theft of millions of dollars from the Treasury and, in general, in the role of the main corrupt official of Zambia. It is unlikely that the former president expected such a turn of events. In 2002, the parliament unanimously voted to lift presidential immunity, 
although Chaluba actively opposed what was happening, filed appeals, in February 2004 the Supreme Court approved this decision. The former president was charged with 59 charges of theft and corruption abuse of authority, he rejected all of them. Nevertheless, Chaluba was under investigation until Mwanawasa's death in 2008, and only this may have saved him from prison. After coming to power, the new president Banda referred to Chaluba as a damn good president. Chaluba was fully acquitted in 2009 in Zambia, but it is worth emphasizing that a parallel trial took place in a London court, at which Chaluba was found guilty of stealing $46 million in 2007. I don't want to justify Frederick Chaluba, but two points should be noted. First, before being elected president, Chaluba was a relatively inexperienced administrator. Trade union activity, which requires pressure, charisma, and the ability to negotiate, was completely different from the presidential routine. Thus, Chaluba was a beginner in administration in 1991. The second important point is the composition of the administrative apparatus, which was headed by the then elected president. Thus, it would not be an exaggeration to say that Chaluba could not cope with his own bureaucrats, who, under an inexperienced president, had overgrown their own businesses and completely immersed themselves in corruption schemes. We must not forget that all this happened in the era of privatization, that is, the redistribution of property. And the former trade union leader himself has obviously changed over time, has become more susceptible to material temptations. After the end of the prosecution, Chaluba remained in politics, expressing every support for his savior, President Banda. Opponents scoffed at this, openly stating that Chaluba just wants to remain free. Former Zambian President Frederick Chaluba died on June 18, 2011 in Lusaka. This is the end of the story. Please subscribe to my channel and like it if you liked the video. Write your opinion about this president in the comments.